There are a number of books on the shelf, including Hero Magazine's Golden Guild Guide to Mordavia, Flora, Fauna and Folklore. There is an empty picture frame above the bookshelf. Either somebody thought the wall itself was a piece of art, or a thief has been at work here. The painting shows a proud-looking adventurer standing on an obviously defeated dragon. It might have had more impact if the dragon wasn't just as obviously winking. The plaque says, Wish you were here in Silmeria, Dunstan. A portrait of an adventurer long gone hangs on the wall here. A small plaque at the base reads, Pyotr, Paladin. A finely crafted sword rests within this case, but there doesn't seem to be a door or any way to open the case. A plaque reads, Break glass in emergency. The case looks totally solid, as if it was constructed around the sword. A plaque reads, Break glass in emergency only. The case is totally sealed. You can't find any way to open it. You break open the front of the case. Avoiding the broken glass, you pull out the sword. It looks like a fine quality weapon. That would be a lot easier if the desk had a drawer. You read in the adventurer's log about some of the exploits of past adventurers in Mordavia. Prominent among them is the story of Pyotr and the Dark One's cult. Near the end of the book, Pyotr tells how he led the armies against the Chernovi cult outside the Dark One's cave. The fighters were trained soldiers, but the cult members fought like madmen. Suddenly the cult members changed their forms and became grotesque monsters. Many of the soldiers panicked and ran. The battle was nearly lost. Then Pyotr heard the voice of Irana. By all my will, I banish you to... The voice was cut off. The cult members screamed and ran. Piotr entered the cave and searched for some sign of life. All he could find were the grotesque remains of cult members. The only sign of Irana was her magical staff lying on the ground. Piotr picked it up and left the cave, knowing that Irana was beyond his help. Piotr then tells how he brought the staff back to town and placed it in the town square. A garden of flowers instantly sprang up around it. Near the end of the book, Piotr tells that he was going to seek out the rituals of the Dark One and destroy them. There are no later entries. You sign your name into the adventurer's logbook with a flourish. It's almost become a habit by now. This is a long, sturdy-looking rope with a grapnel hook attached to one end. You pick up the rope and grapnel set and tie it onto your pack. Some round metal weights lie neatly stacked on the floor. I better hope Dr. Cranium doesn't see them. He'd probably invent the cannon and upset the balance of power. It's a rare example of the deadly Mordavian moose distinguishable by its long, fang-like canines. Someone has strung garlic around its neck, probably in hopes that it will stay on the wall. This is either some sort of diabolical device, or an exercise machine. Come to think of it, exercise machines are diabolical devices. After some rest, you feel better. After some rest, you feel better. After some rest, you feel better. Your legs are too stiff and sore to use this right now. After... 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 After some... There's only a certain amount of punishment your body can stand on any given day. Enough pain, enough gain for now. 
Try again tomorrow. Which book do you want to read? You read the book entitled Climbing Skills for Upwardly Mobile Adventurers. It's written entirely in one-syllable words, obviously intended for fighters. It's absolutely fascinating. This book teaches you that climbing sheer walls is best left for specialists, but that anyone with reasonable strength can climb using a rope and grapnel. You're pretty sure you know what to do now. As you scan through Hero, the Journal of General Job Adjusting, you find quite a bit of information that might be useful here. There are a series of articles about the land of Moldavia. The town originally grew up around Castle Borgov. The Borgovs were the boyars, or local noblemen, assigned the role of guarding the area from invaders. The chapter on fauna describes a number of interesting creatures. The Necrotor is a vicious carnivore with big, sharp teeth. Some of the other monsters sound even more horrific. In the forest lives the Lishi, a creature known for playing practical jokes on travelers and playing riddle games, but which can also be helpful to those it likes. You learn about the Rosalka, the spirit of a murdered, unmarried woman. Such spirits are said to inhabit lakes and rivers. They try to avenge themselves by drowning any man foolish enough to approach them. You could really learn a lot by reading this magazine thoroughly instead of just browsing through it. Isn't it nice that we included a complete copy in your game box? The book turns out to be an advertising brochure. It says, I, Dr. Cranium, predict that someday one of my descendants will become the subject of a major computer game. The Castle of Dr. Brain from Sierra Online. Jeez, how cheesy can you get? The book is all about using spells in unusual and creative ways, such as calming a fire, using alternate flame and frost spells to make something brittle and break, and so on. You pick up a number of useful tips which will improve your spell casting. This book teaches the ancient oriental art of talk fool. How to overcome opponents by attacking them with the unpronounceable names of martial arts forms and confusing them with fortune cookie wisdom. You get lost somewhere between karate and kuksur. This book teaches you how to use the stair stepper to build strong leg muscles and talks about the importance of whole body development. It says to build up your strength gradually by adding weights to the baskets. This book teaches the ancient orient... Nice try, but the bookshelf won't budge. If there's a secret passage around here, it's hidden a different way. Hey, this isn't a lending library.